If you know anything about me, you know that I absolutely adore Nintendo Switches, but more than anything else in the world, I love customizing Nintendo Switches. So when I received gray Joy-Cons from my friend, I knew I had to do something spectacular with them. The gray was just too plain Jane for me. I wanted to do something incredible, and what I ended up with was this. My icy blue switch. Let me show you. From the angle you're uh, currently at, you might not be able to see, but this actually is completely lit up. Every button the Joy-Con has is illuminated, as well as the front dock, where it is illuminated here, is a different LED color. And I'm going to talk about how I did that here in a sec. But I just want to go over the overall design before I talk about the how I did it. My overall design and aesthetic I was going for was kind of a black ice, blue ice type feel. What I really wanted to do was capture kind of a nighttime icy road on a Switch as best I could. So originally I was doing nothing but a pure white shell, but I'm actually glad I did go for this two-tone aesthetic. I think it looks phenomenal. The blue thumbstick was also a creative decision I came to. I just, I think it looks better than the white on this. I think just having it white and black wouldn't capture quite enough color and would look a little bit strange when the LEDs were illuminated. I think the blue actually gives it just enough a little bit of flavor and fun to look interesting on the Switch, as you can see. For the dock, I went with a simple white front plate. I thought that would look really good. The blue LED inside really plays off that well and it really captures kind of the entire aesthetic of the Switch unit as a whole. Speaking of the Switch unit, as you notice, it's still got that black front frame. I'm probably going to replace it with like a like a powder blue or maybe like a this color blue or like the teal light blue. And the back plate is in this nice white finish that really looks clean up against those Joy-Cons. I love that look right here. And I kind of adore how this looks with the all black finish on the front and the all white finish on the back. But I'm going to have different Joy-Cons that I use on this Switch, and I think it's going to look a little bit better if there's like a, a blue and white rather than just the standard, you know, black front plate and uh, a customized back plate. I feel like it's just too normal. Too many people kind of do that automatically. The obvious star that brings all of us together are the Joy-Cons. I'll leave an unlisted video in the description down below, but I'll go ahead and talk about kind of some of the process and show you a quick purview of what I had to do. So the first thing I had to do was completely reshell these things. Um, they were, like I said, originally that stock gray, and I cannot stand that color. I think it's just too plain Jane, so I definitely wanted to go ahead and swap those out. So I wanted to go for a white and blue aesthetic, and I was originally going to order blue buttons. But then I saw the LED mock kit and thought, go big or go home. So I got these white with translucent buttons so that the uh, blue light or whatever light I choose can come through. The actual mod wasn't too bad. Basically, the LED lights work as kind of a pass-through. Think of it like an extension cable from your outlet to your device. Everything that the Switch connects to is modular. The motherboard inside has a bunch of ribbon cables that attach to it. And so all this does is everywhere you'd plug in a ribbon cable normally, you plug this in. And even with the uh, battery, you actually plug this device into the motherboard's battery slot, and then the battery for the Joy-Con plugs in the LED battery slot. Kind of like when you put uh, multiple Christmas lights together. That wasn't so bad. However, to control it, you have to use these buttons, the SL and SR buttons on the Joy-Con. They're ones you wouldn't normally use, so it makes a lot of sense to have them be the control feature. See, if you hold it for five seconds, it will turn off. Once again, if you hold it for five seconds, it will turn on at the first color, which is red. You can then do one second intervals to change the color. Red, green, blue, kind of like a yellowish, uh, purple, another darker blue, and then my favorite, kind of this teal aqua color. It's a really interesting way to program it, and I like it a lot, and I really hope the camera caught all that just because of the way the lighting is. It looks beautiful, and the colors are very crisp. The issue I had was that that was a first generation Joy-Con, meaning it came out right when the Switch did. So the ribbon cables were a little bit friable. And the ribbon cable right behind the SL button bends at a pretty extreme angle inside the Joy-Con. See, for ribbon cables, you usually like to kind of loop them. You don't want them bent. A hard bend usually means you're gonna break it. And sure enough, this one when it was manufactured was given a complete bend. So when I was assembling it and disassembling it, that ribbon cable broke. Now, like I said, this rail has two ribbon cables. 
The one behind the SR right here actually controls the Joy-Con's connection to the Switch. So it technically functions as a normal Joy-Con when plugged on the Switch without this ribbon cable. This ribbon cable only affects two things. The LED light bar on the inside of the rail and the SL and SR buttons. Normally, this wouldn't matter because you never use the SL and SR buttons unless you're playing with one Joy-Con, and I have plenty of Joy-Cons to do that. Except it controls the LEDs. So I then had to order a replacement rail ribbon cable, which took me a little while to find. Luckily, Extreme Ring, which is the company that makes these LED buttons, also makes a ribbon cable light. And so I was able to get a custom one that also was the same color that matched the Joy-Con. So now the interior of the Joy-Con when it connects is the same color I keep the Joy-Cons uh, turn to when they're on. It's a very small detail and most people won't see it, but when they do, it genuinely surprises people and it looks so cool on the Switch. But that light didn't just come with the rails, it also came with an extension for the dock. So when I turn my Switch on in the dock, it is the exact same blue light as the rest of it, adding to that central theme. And I just think it comes together in such a beautiful package. I'm so proud of how it turned out. Aesthetically, I am blown away about how good the Switch looks. I mean, looking at it right now, it still takes my breath away how clean this looks in front of my TV. This is the same Switch that I also used to mod all the retro consoles onto. After the third crash, I did actually take all that off. It wasn't the fault of the mod itself. I messed something up early on that was going to keep causing a redundancy if I didn't reformat that SD card and I did not feel like going through all that rigmarole again. So now I just have this as my backup switch, but honestly as a display piece, this is wonderful. In terms of difficulty, I would say this mod is probably a 5 out of 10. Honestly, I'm really waiting to do some mods that require soldering. I think those are going to be where we start getting up into like the 8s, 9s, and 10s. The by far hardest thing I've done is replace a front plate on this Switch. That requires the use of a heat gun, completely disassembling your Switch, melting off that front uh, digitizer, and then putting everything back together with a new frame. There's so many small screws and so many moving pieces it can be a little bit difficult, and I've definitely broken uh, an SD card slot before on my Persona Switch. Um, so that's what I'm definitely going to do on this again. I've done it once again with my fiance switch. Uh, but I would say this probably a five out of 10, the dock light, I would say maybe a three out of 10. It's very easy as long as you have the right equipment and every extreme rate mod does come with both the Y tip screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver and a sponger. Usually I don't know that it comes with a dock one, but for the most part, they all do. If you are just starting out and you want to do a Switch mod, I recommend not starting necessarily with this one. It just requires a lot of intimate knowledge of how the Joy-Con kind of assembles itself. By far, this could be your first one and you could probably kick ass at it. It's just a little bit difficult and I felt a lot more comfortable kind of knowing the interior of the Joy-Con, knowing how to finagle it properly. I think if this is your first time, it might be just a little bit daunting when you get in there. And I think the trepidation might cause you to maybe accidentally like rip a ribbon cable or something like that. And that is a very tedious process to try and fix. Luckily, the Joy-Con is inherently modular. So if you did break a ribbon cable, you 100% could fix it. But some parts are easier to get than others. Like the uh, thumbsticks, you can get for like five bucks each. That's not bad at all. But if you're breaking the ribbon cable for say the antenna, or maybe you break the, uh, the uh, attachment for the rumble pack, that can be a lot of money out of pocket to try and fix. And it can be a little bit difficult to find one too. But I think the results speak for themselves. When you turn this on, it looks fantastic. People immediately are drawn to this as part of your collection. And luckily the LED lights actually pull from the Joy-Con battery. So there's no worry about them, you know, requiring a different power source or anything. As long as your Joy-Cons are charged, the LED lights are charged. I haven't had the time to try and drain these Joy-Cons with the LEDs versus without. Honestly, that would take forever. Joy-Con battery life is amazing, especially for how often I play my Switch. I never have a problem with it. You know, if I'm not playing handheld, I'm 100% going to use one of my Pro Controllers. There's no reason for me to use, you know, two detached Joy-Cons with a grip. So I, I think it's probably going to be fine. It'll probably drain it a little bit faster, but I don't think it's going to be necessarily anything crazy fast. Uh, LED lights just don't have that same power sink as like standard bulbs. And keep in mind, these bulbs are absolutely tiny and the Joy-Con battery pack is actually pretty sizable. 
So let me know what you think. Do you think this was a cool mod? Do you want to see more videos like this where I kind of go over my design philosophy as well as the mod that I do? Are you interested in Switch mods at all? Are you doing any of your own? Please let me know in that comment section down below. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like on it. And like we always say here, I hope to see you around sometime.